everyone and this is bio phoenix here and today we're going to be taking a look at a gamecube game and that happens to be dragon drive d master shot and it was developed by treasure and it was published by bandai and then it was released in 2003 on the gamecube and only in japan now one thing to get out of the way first is that this is a game that is based after an anime series, but uh, I've actually never seen the series at all. In fact, I've never even heard about it until I stumbled upon this game randomly. So I can't really comment on the anime series itself, but uh, even after uh, watching some of the cutscenes in this game, I still only had a little bit of an idea what was going on since this game did not have any English subtitles, which is understandable because this game was uh, not released over here. So here is the best of my ability to uh, understand the story. So you play as a junior high school student named Reiji Ozara, and apparently he is a lazy piece of shit. So one of his friends named Maiko ends up showing him a video game that's in virtual reality called Dragon Drive. Hey look, we're playing a game called Dragon Drive within a game called Dragon Drive, hoo <laughs> hoo. So this is a game where you get teleported into a virtual world where you get to fly around with dragons and start shooting the everlasting shit out of each other. So after doing the tutorial mission, a bunch of malfunctions start happening and shit gets wrecked and apparently uh, you and a couple of your friends end up getting trapped inside the world in the game. And now that I think about it, this is all starting to sound a little bit like that one season of Yu-Gi-Oh where they get trapped inside the virtual world thing. Or just, you know, any of those MMO animes out there where the typical thing is, Oh, we got trapped inside the game and we need to find a way out. Well, anyways, that's basically what you need to know if you really cared about the story in this game to begin with. So, anyways, now let's get moving on and start talking about the game. So this is a third-person aerial shooter, very similar to games like Star Fox and Panzer Dragoon. Although I'd say more closer to Panzer Dragoon because, you know, fucking dragons. But the one big difference here is that the game is not setting on rails, instead you can actually fly like in almost any direction you want. And you just gotta shoot everything in sight. And whenever a boss appears, you gotta shoot him up too, and this is kind of the part where the game kind of feels like an arena fighting game, but just, you know, with shoot em up elements. And there are many cards you get to pick up that do give you power ups, such as like being invincible for a couple seconds, or having different rates of fire, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And you also do get a shield that does protect you temporarily, but it does use up uh, some SP. And just like in Panzer Dragoon, you can uh, actually hold the fire button and you can lock onto multiple targets and then when you let go, it just like totally annihilates them all. So in the story mode, as expected, you just play through the story, you do the different stages, beat the many different bosses. And then in DD Center, this is where you get the library where you get to view all the different cards you get to collect. And then there's a, a two-player mode where you and a friend can start shooting at each other and you get to have up to uh, 17 playable dragons, although of course doing the main story gets you to unlock most of them. So yeah, that sums up what you need to know about the content within this game, so now let's take a look at the game's controls. So the controls in this game are actually pretty good. So everything is pretty easy to understand, so going forward and backwards is being used with the L and R. And if you tap one of them twice, and it does give you a little bit of a boost. A button shoots, and holding it lets you charge, and then B button pulls up the shield. And then pressing Y while holding any direction allows you to do a dodge maneuver. And just by the way, no, it's not a barrel roll. And then X button allows you to lock on to certain targets. And using the D-pad allows you to use the cards that you collected. And I'm not going to explain moving and aiming, because I'm sure you can figure that out. But yeah, everything is really simple to understand, and it also does feel really responsive for the most part. The only minor thing when it comes to the controls in this game is that I do find that the lock-on can be a little bit weird at times. For an example, if you're locked onto an enemy, and that enemy that you're locked on gets way too close, it will unlock you, and when it does that, it can actually really throw you off. Same thing can happen when uh, certain objects get in front of you when you're locked onto something. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes it will, and like I said, it can, just gets kind of annoying. So yeah, other than that one thing, I gotta say, the controls on this one are actually pretty damn good. So now let's get moving on to the other things, like the graphics, and the graphics this time are, uh, just kind of okay. Definitely not great, but also not terrible. 
But let's start on the positive things. So I do find that the dragon designs in this game are pretty well done for the most part. And the anime cutscenes do seem pretty good for what they are. Granted, i never seen the show, so I don't know if this looks exactly like the show for it's taken from it or not. But, you know, I can't complain about that. So as for the things about the graphics that I don't like as much, really has to do with the, uh, like, the textures in the game. Now, like I said, this is not the worst looking thing you'll ever see on the GameCube, but... I don't know, everything in the background, like, nothing really stands out. Everything just looks kinda just bland and just not really memorable. The only scene in the entire game that I actually remembered something from was this spooky looking castle level, which I actually liked quite a lot, but otherwise, yeah, a lot of the stages in this game are definitely not the best designed looking. But I suppose it does the job just fine, you know, not amazing looking, but not terrible. So overall, the graphics for this one are definitely not great, but they're also not terrible, so yeah, they're just kind of alright. So now, as for the game's music, the music in this game is actually pretty good. Now as again, I don't know if this is music that also played from the show, but what I can say is that the music in here, I actually do like it quite a bit. So you do get a lot of like trance and like a little bit of light like, guitars thrown in, I think it actually sounds really freaking cool. And it does suit the setting very well, so I really can't complain about that. The only unfortunate thing is that I can't find very much of the songs on YouTube, so you're probably going to be listening to some random other background music that I'm putting in here, but despite all that though, what I can say is that the music in this one, I actually do think it is pretty good. If you can find it, I do think it is at least worth listening to. But then again, this is from the company Treasure, and they have actually done some uh, pretty damn good OSTs before, so I guess this shouldn't be much of a surprise. So now, if you wanted to go out and buy this game, so one thing I gotta say is that since this game is only released in Japan, that means that unfortunately you won't be able to play it on your North American console, unless there is like a way you can like, hack your GameCube or something, but I don't know anything about that. So as for the three of them, yes, only three that I'm seeing on here. So there is one selling for uh, $19.99, and then there's another one for $21, and then there's another one selling for $60. So it's kind of hard to say just with like three options, but what I can say from here is that it does seem to be fairly cheap. I mean, at least like $20 around there it doesn't seem so bad. Although I think the $60 one is kind of like high on crack. But that's just if you do want to buy yourself an original copy of the game. Of course, if you want to emulate the game, the game does work perfectly fine, especially if you have it on Dolphin on a computer that can handle it well. So yes, for the most part, this game does seem to be uh, not too expensive, especially for an import title. And then next thing you know, things change as soon as I say that. Well, anyways, now as for my overall thoughts on this game, Dragon Drive D Master Shots is a pretty good game. But as fun as this game was, I don't think it's as good as like games like Panzer Dragoon or Star Fox. I mean, those games totally mop the floor with this one. But this game is still pretty enjoyable for the most part. The only real complaints I have with it is that the, uh, the lock-on thing can be a little bit weird at times, and also the fact that there's not a lot of other game modes you get to play. I mean, after the story mode, there's not a whole lot else you get to do. Although I suppose that's pretty common for a shoot 'em up thing like this. But other than that, this is a pretty enjoyable game. But it is pretty cool to see a game that does play very similar to Pendra Dragoon. I guess you can say that uh, this is like the GameCube version of Pendra Dragoon Orta. But only that it was based after a weird anime that has to do with virtual reality shit. So yeah, if you do want a uh, simple but sweet 3D shoot 'em up, then I would say this one is a pretty enjoyable one that is worth a try. And if you have seen the show before and you really liked it, well, it's good to know that this game actually did turn out to be pretty good. Since it is unfortunate that there is many great animes out there that got a lot of turds. And I'm looking at you, Hokuto no Ken 7, fuck you! So yeah, Dragon Drive is an enjoyable game from Treasure. I was not really expecting them to make a game like this, but uh, hey, I'm not complaining, they do some pretty cool stuff. And they even did a McDonald's game for crying out loud, so yeah, I guess they can turn any weird concept of a game and make it at least pretty good or decent, right? So yeah, that sums up my thoughts on the game Dragon Drive D Master Shot. And no, not Dick Master Shot, although that would have been pretty funny, but anyways, so that's all I got to say about here, so uh, thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day.